All right, so we'll try this again. <laughs> so just a couple of housekeeping items to start. Please note that this session will be recorded and all registered attendees will receive a recording after the event. We have a great program for you today and I'm excited to begin this evening's discussion. Before we get started, we wanted to learn a little bit more about you. On that Zoom toolbar, um, you'll see a chat button there. Right now, I'd love for you to introduce yourself and tell us where you're Zooming from, share your major or job, Share what inspires you to be creative, why you are here, or just say hello. Just remember to select all panelists and attendees in the drop down field. Also, on that Zoom top toolbar, you'll see a QA button. At any time during the presentation, submit any questions you might have there, and we'll answer as many of those questions at the end. So, good evening, everyone. My name is Jill Motika. I'm from the marketing department at Colorado State University Global. As someone that has been to Disney World numerous times and is counting down the 311 days until my next visit, I am so pleased to welcome you to a Disney career journey with Kathleen Hill, Marketing Strategy Manager with Walt Disney World. Um, with that, I'd also like to introduce our host for this evening, Dr. Leanne Walker. Dr. Walker has 15 years of professional experience in marketing, advertising, graphic design, corporate branding, and social media for both for-profit and nonprofit organizations. For the last 11 years, Dr. Walker has worked in higher education, and currently she is the program director overseeing the undergraduate marketing and graduate marketing certificate programs at CSU Global. She holds quite a few degrees, a doctorate of business administration and marketing, a Master's of Business Administration and Marketing, and a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Graphic Design. Many of you on the call know Dr. Walker, so please use the chat to join me in welcoming one of our favorite professors here at CSU Global, Dr. Leanne Walker. Thank you, Jill. That was a wonderful introduction. Hello and good evening to all of you joining us from all over the globe, hopefully. Um, I'm really excited to be here tonight to share this webinar um, it's with great pleasure I introduce this month's marketing guest speaker, Kathleen Hill. She currently serves as the marketing strategy manager for the Walt Disney World brand, Celebration, and Epcot. Kathleen started her Disney career through the Disney College program as a parking hostess at Disney's Animal Kingdom. After six months of creating magic for guests outside Disney's Animal Kingdom, in the spring of 2014, Kathleen joined the Animal Kingdom guest relations team. Her first day was being part of the rollout of the My Magic Plus. I love those wristbands. They're, my kids love them too. She spent two years in marketing and event logistics and project management at the Disney Institute before three years in marketing strategy for ESPN Wide World of Sports at Walt Disney World. In 2020, Kathleen joined the Walt Disney World brand celebrations and Epcot transformation team as a marketing strategy manager. Currently, Kathleen is leading the marketing strategy efforts for the 50th anniversary anniversary celebration campaign, that's a mouthful, at Walt Disney World, which happens this October, I know because we live in Florida. She's partnering with many teams across her organization, such as marketing, sales, operations, merchandise, food and beverage, to name a few. And no one can argue it will be the world's most magical celebration. She graduated from Rollins College with her MBA with a focus in marketing. And my students know that I love to share fun facts and some fun facts about Kathleen are her favorite Disney attraction is the People Mover. My kids love that too. Her favorite characters are Belle, Judy Hopps, and Minnie Mouse. And her favorite Disney movie is Beauty and the Beast. Please join me in welcoming Kathleen Hill. Kathleen? Thank you, Dr. Walk. Walker, I'm so excited to be here tonight um, and share a little bit about my Disney career journey. Um, it, thank you for um, explaining um, that the CSU program does see lots of value and encourages students to, um, to take internships. I'm excited to be able to share a little bit about how internships have really gotten me to where I am in my career. Um, so I look forward to um, chatting. So I wanted to start just by sharing an overview um, of my Disney career. So as Dr. Walker said, um, I did begin my career in a parking lot. Um, 
very um, wonderful experience on the Disney College program. Um, and I've learned um, different things um, in my Disney career. Um, I had more frontline operational roles in parking or guest relations. And I have had experience in marketing and project management more behind the scenes in a corporate setting. Um, and I think that's one thing I would really love to impart to all of you this evening. Um, often in your career, you do really need that frontline um, foundational experience to springboard yourself um, into that next um, section of your career journey. So I'm gonna walk um, through my Disney career um, one place at a time. So if we can um, go to the next slide, I'd love to share with you um, where my Disney career started. So at Disney, um, where you um, worked, your first park, we call it your home park. So Disney's Animal Kingdom um, is my home park. I started there in 2013, um, parking cars. And really the key lesson that I learned in that six months parking cars was the idea of bloom where you're planted. One might think, wow, parking cars doesn't sound like the most glamorous job. Um, and I have to admit it was not glamorous, but I learned things um, about our guest and about what our guest expects from the Walt Disney World brand by learning um, every day what guests show up and expect. So I think I really made the best out of that six months. Um, I truly bloomed where I was planted. And so I think as you think about your career, you might find yourself in a not glamorous job and that's okay. You're there for a reason. You will learn something um, and you will definitely carry forward those lessons um, in the rest of your career. So after that six months on the Disney College program in parking, um, like Dr. Walker said, I had the fantastic opportunity to stay at Disney's Animal Kingdom, and I transitioned into my first Disney professional internship um, as a guest relations hostess. So guest relations um, host and hostesses serve as kind of like the concierge of the theme park. So um, it was great because I learned how Disney thinks about quality service, but I was also there for the rollout of my Magic Plus technologies. So the kind of key lesson from my six months on that internship is the idea that all guests are VIP, very individual people who need individualized help and solutions. So you can even apply that to a marketing lens, right? Every customer is VIP. They're very individual and they often need individualized help and solutions. So being able to take the skill of empathy to put yourself in the other person's shoes and think about what their needs and wants are, um, it's a, just a critical skill that will help you out um, throughout your career. So we can go on to the next slide. After Disney's Animal Kingdom, um, I found my way over to the Disney Institute, which is the career development arm and professional development arm of the Walt Disney Company. Disney Institute teaches individuals and companies um, different training courses and topics. Um, three of the big ones are Disney's approach to quality service, Disney's approach to employee engagement, and Disney's approach to leadership excellence. So it was at Disney Institute when I had my second Disney professional internship, but it was my first true marketing strategy internship. At the time, I was working with the marketing strategy manager at Disney Institute, as well as the communications manager. It offered me a great opportunity to learn what marketing and communications looks like at the Walt Disney Company. And it kind of helped me understand from a career perspective, was I more interested in specializing in marketing and communications? While I enjoyed both, um, I definitely found myself gravitating towards that marketing strategy type of skill set. So in that role, my key lesson that I learned in that year was is um, something that one of my mentors and uh, my boss at the time would often say. So the problem with communication is the illusion that it has taken place. So throughout your career, you might often um, communicate something to someone but they might interpret it differently or perhaps they weren't fully listening. So I think one of the things I learned in that um, year at Disney Institute as a marketing intern was that communication takes time and it takes effort and you really do have to be diligent um, in your communications. You can't just assume that because you've said something once um, that the message has been received. Um, and so from a marketing perspective, right, it's more of the value of why you might um, have to communicate something more than once to your consumer. Um, you can't just assume one billboard will get the job done. So just something to keep in mind. After that um, year, oh, so sorry, we'll go back. So after um, a year as an intern, I did get to stay in um, my first full-time role at Disney. So I was a delivery coordinator handling um, event logistics and project management for Disney Institute um, de professional development programs. Um, and my key lesson here was if you want to learn and grow at Disney, raise your hand. 
So um, one of my mentors um, explained to me that at Disney, you can often have um, 12 different careers in your one Disney career, right? There are so many different teams and opportunities and projects that often, if you want to learn and grow, you just need to say, hi, I'm interested in learning and growing, and then see what kind of door opens. Um, the delivery coordinator role was unique because it was not marketing strategy, but it was my opportunity to stay with Disney um, and continue to look for that right fit marketing strategy role. So I raised my hand, I said, I'm willing to learn project management, um, and I had a great year. Project management is a skill set that now I use um, in my everyday role as a marketing strategy manager working on the 50th, right? I'm project managing elements of our celebration with food and beverage, operations, sales, merchandise, et cetera. So I think, again, in your career, you might be able to take um, a roundabout path to your long-term goal. You might be able to go learn something like project management um, or maybe a certain software that then will come back and help you later. And that's totally okay. We'll go to our next slide. So after the Disney Institute, um, I made my way into my first full-time marketing strategy role at Disney, and I was um, grateful to have the opportunity for, to spend three years at Disney Sports Marketing. So I focused on ESPN Wide World of Sports, which is a top-tier youth sporting event venue located at Walt Disney World Resort. And I had a great um, three-year run there. I matriculated through the system. Um, I had experience as a marketing strategy coordinator where my kind of key lesson there in that year is the idea that developing excellent communication skills is absolutely essential to effective leadership and partnership. So in my role at Disney Sports Marketing, um, my friends often laughed because um, I am not a sports gal by any means, but I was able to use my communication skills and my partnership skills to get the job done. I knew the marketing piece, but I had to rely on my partners who are the sports experts um, to ensure that the tactics um, and the programs and the campaigns we were putting out truly um, were authentic to the sports audience. Um, a, a little example of that um, is someone once told me, oh, Kathleen, we need a soccer flyer. And so I said, okay, I go into the database, um, I pull our key messages, I pull the dates of the soccer event and I pull a soccer or what I thought was the right soccer image. Um, the communication um, was not clear, so I did not understand that the youth soccer event um, was for much younger children, right? And so younger kids use a different size regulation um, soccer goal. So it was a good lesson for me that I needed to be more um, clear and effective in my communication. Um, we then had to go back to the drawing board. I learned what that proper um, soccer goal size is, but um, it's just something to keep in mind, right? Everyone makes mistakes, but being able to communicate openly and honestly with your partners will help um, along the way. Um, so still at Disney Sports Marketing, um, in, later on in 2017, I was promoted to a marketing strategy associate where I got to lead uh, my first integrated communications plan, which I'll talk about what that kind of document looks like um, in just a little bit. But as a marketing strategy associate, one key lesson that I learned um, is the idea that we, there's high importance of a mindset that never allows, because that's the way we've always done it, to be an acceptable answer to any question. Whether you find yourself working at a small business or a large company like Disney, um, it can often become um, the path of least resistance, right? To rely on strategies, tactics, campaigns that have worked in the past. But we know that our consumers are always changing, needs and wants are always um, changing. And so we need to be able to question the way we've done things before in order to have more efficient and effective campaigns in the future. So don't be afraid um, to kind of pause, think about what's been done um, previously and say, hey, maybe this worked last year, but we need to tweak it based on um, right now, maybe the consumer mindset is different because of travel readiness. Not everyone is comfortable given the environment um, of traveling right now. So we would need to maybe change that mindset that worked for us previously. So always be um, uh, bold and able to kind of question, hey, are we okay to change the strategy? And then um, in 2019, um, I was promoted to a marketing strategy manager at Disney Sports Marketing. And for the first time, um, I was able to learn CRM or email marketing. So in that year um, of building out the CRM and um, the different email campaigns for ESPN Wide World of Sports, my key lesson I always learned was to always have a plan and a backup plan, right? You can use all of the consumer research, you can use all this um, expert opinion from your marketing organization to have a plan, but 
more often than not, something will change um, and you will have to be nimble and kind of have that backup plan. Um, so that's just one thing that um, I have learned to always kind of keep in your back pocket. Um, you might really love your plan A, but it's always very important to have a plan B on the back burner just in case. So then um, after ESPN World of Sports, that brings us to my current role on the Walt Disney World brand team. So right now um, I'm a marketing strategy manager for the Walt Disney World brand. So the most um, world's most magical place on earth, the celebrations team. So um, we're, our upcoming celebration is the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World. And then the Epcot transformation body of work. Epcot as a theme park is going through um, a transformation that touches every corner of our theme park. Um, and in this role, um, I have been learning the key lesson of confidence is key. Um, because we're working on such a big program right now for the 50th anniversary, um, it's our largest um, campaign. It has our largest merchandise efforts. Um, it's just very different than anything I've worked on before. And so um, one thing that my leader has um, imparted um, onto me in this role is that confidence is key, right? I know um, my little piece of the pie, um, but I'm confident in the way I present myself in meetings with partners. Um, and so again, it's that idea of always um, being able to share your ideas, asking those good questions, um, getting those uh, deeper level um, responses from partners. One thing is having the confidence to ask someone, well, um, can you tell me more? Can you help me learn? Um, why might um, one option work better for um, the operation versus the other? And just have the confidence that sometimes there are difficult conversations needed, um, but you would rather write, um, have the difficult conversations um, up front than launch a campaign of this scale um, and down the road realize, wow, we, we, we left a stone unturned. So be confident in your ability to think through different um, paths and different options. So I think um, what we'll do next is we'll go to the next slide and we'll talk about my day-to-day um, -day role um, as a marketing strategy manager. So to explain it succinctly, I like to tell people as a marketing strategy manager at Disney World, um, I build the brand and I drive demand. So building the brand, you think of um, things like our tagline, um, the most magical place on earth. Um, our series of logos. You can see here um, is a sample photo of Cinderella Castle. We recently um, repainted it um, to match our new kind of brand look and feel. There's that new blue, which I think is just lovely. The other half of my role is driving demand, right? So at Walt Disney World, we drive demand for theme park tickets, room nights, merchandise, food and beverage, and other commercial activations. So that's one thing that um, we work on. And you might be thinking, well, Kathleen, how do you build the brand and how do you drive demand? Um, we use three very specific marketing strategy type of documents. The first is um, what we call an AAR or an after action review. And an after action review um, is sometimes in the industry called a post mortem. So we basically look at how a campaign did the previous year or previous season. We um, have the kind of start, stop, continue conversation. What do we want to start doing differently in the next um, year or phase of a campaign? What might not have worked that we want to stop? And then um, continue. What really worked well for us in the past campaign that we want to keep as a best practice going forward? So after we complete that AAR process, we move into um, our roadmap document. So our roadmap document outlines my um, marketing strategy um, kind of key elements of any campaign. So it's what's the key benefit of the campaign? What are the reasons to believe? Who is our target audiences? What um, milestones or deadlines or timelines do we need to be aware of? Um, so we kind of put together that roadmap and take it on a road show to all of our different partners here at Walt Disney World Resort. Um, and we take it on that kind of road show. So then our different subject matter experts or as we call them centers of excellence can build out their own tactics to support our marketing campaign. So once all of our um, different centers of excellence come up with their tactics to support our marketing campaign, then I compile what we call an ICP or an integrated communication plan. So it takes my marketing strategy and then all the different tactics that tear up to it. Um, we can actually go to the next slide and I'll explain centers of excellence before I talk about marketing integration. Um, so when I take that roadmap on the roadshow to our partners, um, at Disney, we call them centers of excellence. And these centers of excellence are experts in different um, areas of marketing and communications. So one sample of a center of excellence um, is our public relations team. They handle things like the Disney Parks blog, um, press releases, photo shoots, video shoots, that sort of thing. 
Um, Yellow Shoes is another center of excellence at Disney. Yellow Shoes functions as our own in-house creative agency. So they handle all of our graphic design, um, our video editing, um, that sort of creative thing. They are just fantastic. And I wish I was as creative as they were. Um, another center of excellence is our social media team. If you've um, checked out TikTok recently, we have at Disney Parks on TikTok and they're doing fantastic work over there. Um, and then we have CE or consumer engagement, which is kind of our research data and analytics team. Um, they deep dive into the data um, at Disney, but then they also handle the digital and paid media. So things like um, our paid ads on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, um, and consumer engagement also handles um, email marketing for us. So we can go back one slide. So the point of a um, integrated community communication plan, excuse me, right? We have the marketing strategy, but it's not just our plan. It's truly a holistic plan that integrates across all of those different centers of excellence. Um, it, it truly does take a village. So then um, my kind of third point here, as far as what does my day-to-day -day look like? Um, because I'm so focused on um, the marketing strategy um, and specifically the marketing integration across Walt Disney World for the 50th anniversary, as Dr. Walker said, um, I work with partners like merchandise, food and beverage, sales, resorts, premium services. Um, it's my job to make sure that our marketing message for the 50th, our look, our feel, our color palette, our logos um, are integrated properly and efficiently with all of those different lines of business. So it's been really neat being able to meet partners. Um, I never expected to work um, on food and beverage menu development with that team or um, on the largest merchandise collection that Walt Disney World has ever um, put together. So I think it's just a good example of, while I work in marketing strategy, um, I truly do partner with lots of different subject matter experts. And that's one of the things I love about my role. I get to work with the best of the best every day. So we can go ahead and go um, maybe two slides forward. I think I have a slide about goal setting. Oh, no, I'm sorry. So um, this is a fun one. When you think marketing, right, you often think of the four P's of marketing, product, price, place, and promotion. And those are kind of like the hard marketing skills. But I want to share um, these other four P's of marketing, which are more soft skills that um, I believe are important in a marketing career. These four P's of marketing, or the other four P's, came from um, one of my Disney mentors, Chris Conley. Um, and he kind of imparted these as words of wisdom to me, and I hope um, you will find them valuable as well. So the first other 4P is persistence. Um, so in your career, you need to remember, never give up and never quit, right? You might have tough days, but um, keep persisting. There's a video, so your homework for this evening um, is to Google, or excuse me, um, look on YouTube, um, Jimmy's speech from the SB Awards in 1993. He has a great um, kind of talk on persistence, and I think you'll love it. The second other 4P of marketing is passion, right? So in marketing, you wanna do work that excites you or something that you're passionate about. And that's um, my mentor, Chris, um, it's his kind of go-to phrase. He actually just left Disney um, to follow his passion and now he's the SVP um, of marketing for um, a MLB team. So you never know where your passion will take you in life, right? The third P of, um, or the other third P of marketing is patience. Um, so this is a quote from Bob Iger, former CEO of Disney. It takes time for good things to happen after you put in the hard work. So I think this goes back, um, patience in your career, right? Thinking back to my first um, job at Disney in the parking lot, I had to have patience. I wasn't going to graduate school and become a marketing strategy manager right off the bat, right? You really need to put in the hard work um, and be patient and good things will happen in time and you'll learn and grow along the way. So. You might not uh, be a marketing strategy manager or CEO tomorrow, but um, have that patience and allow yourself to grow and learn um, key lessons along the way. The fourth other P of marketing um, is people, right? So being able to interact um, and build relationships with others is critical. Um, in my marketing experience, right? I'm not just working with marketing and working with marketing and working with PR, social media, um, yellow shoes, as well as all of our operational teams, merchandise, food and beverage, et cetera. So I really have to do work hard at building relationships because there are 75,000 cast members here at Walt Disney World and um, it takes a village. Um, the other side of the people coin is people help people get jobs. So this is just um, kind of general networking advice, right? You never know um, 
who you will help that will one day help you. Um, I am a big believer in um, paying it forward. Um, I had so many incredible mentors um, when I wanted to get into Disney or when I wanted to get in a full-time role at Disney. People set time with me. They reviewed my resume. They would do mock interviews. So now I feel it's my job um, as a leader to help that next generation of marketing strategy or um, really anyone out um, in their career. So always remember, um, give back when you can. So that wraps up the other four pieces of marketing. So we can go to my next slide. And this is a fun story. Um, and this is actually how Dr. Walker and I met. So I shared this post um, on LinkedIn um, earlier in the year, and it's um, about goal setting. So the story is in 2015, I was a marketing intern at Disney Institute, as you know. I had an incredible internship year, but at the end of our internship, we had to do kind of a final presentation. So I gave my final presentation um, of all the things I did, all the things I learned, um, and then it was open Q and A. And my vice president at the time asked me, Kathleen, where do you see yourself in five years? And I said, you know, in five years, Walt Disney World will be turning 50 and I would love to be working on the marketing strategy team. And that's something that from that moment on, it was on my personal development plan every year with my leader. Um, I told everyone that this was a goal of mine. And so I was fortunate enough to achieve that five-year goal when I joined this team that I'm on now last year. Um, and I just think goal setting is so important and um, I think often it can fall by the wayside, right? There's so much going on in the day-to-day -day work environment that goal setting can sometimes fall to the wayside. But I think it's important, something to take time for yourself, right? Um, you are in charge of your own career, you navigate that on boat, to take time to set goals. Set short-term one or two year goals. Um, these are more maybe tactical goals, like maybe you want to learn a new software, you want to learn some sort of new um, marketing platform, like maybe you wanna learn TikTok but then set long-term goals as well. What do you wanna do in your career? Maybe you want um, to be promoted in five years to a role with direct reports. Think through the short-term and the long-term, write them down because there is value um, and power in writing goals down. And then um, talk with your mentors, talk with your bosses about it. Um, share your goals with others um, because you never know who will be able to help you out um, in your goal. So then um, we can go on to the next slide. So this is kind of my last formal final thought. So regardless of if you work in marketing strategy, social media, public relations, digital media, advertising, or any other subject matter, always remember to keep a mindset that never allows, because that's how it's always been done, to be an acceptable answer to any question. And that's just a quote I love from Bob Chapek, and I really let it um, drive me on a daily basis in my career. Um, always be courageous and confident. Um, ask the question, hey, have we thought about it this way? Um, you never know. Um, where an idea might um, go and how an idea might grow and blossom. And there's also power in um, ideas from other people, right? Collaborating, I'm big on the idea of yes and. So if someone has a good idea, you say yes and, and you build upon it and the two of you, right, can have a stronger idea than one person by themselves. So just something to keep in mind. Um, I hope this has been helpful from a career um, journey standpoint, but I would love to kind of open it up and um, see what kind of questions you might have. That sounds great, Kathleen. That was so wonderful. I was actually taking notes as you were talking. I felt like I was the student for a change. Um, I loved all of your notes on confidence. Communication is key. Teamwork, it truly does take a village. We know that whether we are in school, needing that support system behind us, or whether you're in your career and working as a team, to make something come to fruition and the growth factor. I loved hearing your story and how along the way you picked up new skills and you learned new knowledge and that allowed you to progress and having that passion for marketing really drove your passion forward and, and you forged your own path. Um, so that was really great. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. I have several questions that we're gonna get answered here. Um, the first one, what was the most engaging or exciting campaign that you have worked on so far in your career? Well, um, I think I'm most excited right now um, for the work I'm doing right now on Walt Disney World's 50th anniversary, the world's most magical celebration. We went public in February um, with the kind of kickoff date of the campaign. Um, we start our 50 year anniversary celebration on October 1st of this year. 
It's an 18 month celebration and selfishly, I'm just very excited. I share a birthday with Magic Kingdom. So I'm selfishly excited for that. But I think from a past campaign um, perspective of what's been completed, I really love the work that I got to do um, on the Pro Bowl two years ago. So Orlando hosted the Pro Bowl, but ESPN Wide World of Sports um, was hosting kind of the Family Fun Fest. So that was really neat um, to be able to work with the Pro Bowl team, but also our ESPN teams um, out of Connecticut. So very interesting. Never expected to work with ESPN, but here we are. Yeah, that's exciting. So in terms of marketing programs and tools that you use in your role now, or maybe previously, what would you recommend that every new or graduating marketer or even a career changer who's someone who's coming into marketing should become familiar with? Absolutely. So I think from a hard skill standpoint, the marketing um, strategy basics, right? You want to know your four P's. You need to know your way um, around a strategy input document. So think about what's the key benefit of a campaign? What are the reasons to believe or why should um, a consumer kind of believe um, in your campaign? Um, know how to think about um, target audience. How can you um, slice and dice an audience from a demographic or geographic perspective? Um, what else is important? Um, Recently, I've been learning the value of um, learning my way around a style guide, right? So we need to think how our logos work in, in different formats. So a logo that works um, for a national TV spot might not pay off the same in a digital campaign or, or on a t-shirt. So be able to think about that um, and rely on your design knowledge. Um, I think another would be um, kind of that creative, more of a soft skill. Um, while I am not um, as creative as my Yellow Shoes um, in-house creative team, it's um, often important in marketing to be able to think through what you want from a creative campaign when you input that more expert creative. So I myself will take pen to paper and I'll scratch out um, kind of little storyboards, right? It's chicken scratch or it's little symbols and icons, but it's communicating my vision and it helps me tell a story so then I can get the real experts who do photo and video and graphic design to kind of translate my vision to reality. Um, other soft skills, I think, um, for graduates would be that relationship building, right? Um, you're going to work with people your entire life, so um, ensure that you're able to um, communicate well and um, build teams. Um, I think one, um, let's see, another maybe more technical skill, um, We've recently seen in our um, marketing strategy world, um, kind of metrics and tracking have started to become um, more of a necessity. So we're using a tool right now called Smartsheet um, from a data and analytics perspective, um, but there's other software, things like Workfront um, and Microsoft, I believe has their own version of these type of tracking programs. Um, so I guess the hard skill would be those specific software, but the soft skill, right? Being able to learn and grow. Um, if someone says, hey, we have this new program um, our marketing team is going to use for tracking assets or for sending out emails, be willing to learn and grow and do the research um, to learn those um, pieces of software, right? Because technology is always changing. So that's something in marketing we need to be open to learning. Absolutely. So would you say as kind of a sidebar question to that, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, when I was in marketing and corporate, a lot of it was just your traditional marketing. And in the last 10 to 12 years, we've seen digital marketing kind of take off and flourish. Would you say those on your team are well-versed in both traditional and digital marketing? Yes, absolutely. Um, for our national or brand campaign, right, every year, we have more traditional tactics like um, TV or cinema spots, um, mailers, that sort of thing. But a lot of where we're hitting our um, kind of more niche audiences are those digital tactics. So we're on social media, um, we're on niche platforms like TikTok. Um, we started to explore podcasting and kind of how that from a marketing perspective adds to your marketing mix. Um, and even other technology, um, trying to think of another example, but it's just, there's always something new. And so you need to be able to look at it and think, is this a way, is this new technology a way to reach an audience that maybe I didn't have access to before? Mm -hmm. That's perfect. So in terms of keeping up to date and relevant in your field, are there marketing channels or trends or resources that you utilize to keep up to date? Or 
Is it just as it becomes aware to you? Yeah. So um, for my own personal development, um, I follow um, different um, kind of organizations or publications. Um, I love HBR. I love reading their articles and kind of seeing what's new in the marketing industry, but also the business industry in general. Um, I'm a member of the, the ANA, the Association of National Advertisers, to kind of keep that um, side of my wheelhouse sharp. And then, um, I don't know, I do a lot of reading on just LinkedIn and Twitter, keeping up with the pulse of what's trending and what's new. And um, I just like to keep, keep myself uh, informed. That sounds great. I do a lot of the same and podcasts have become a new favorite of mine. Um, let's switch gears a little bit because we know that Walt Disney, Walt Disney World is one of those iconic brands that people would love to work for. If someone was to work on your team, what would make their application stand out to you? Mm -hmm. That's an excellent question. So I think here at Disney, um, my leader who hired me shared the idea that we hire for attitude, not aptitude. So, well, yes, you can take marketing um, coursework, you can take marketing um, specialty classes and certifications. I think what comes through, especially in an interview, is an attitude, right? We look for people um, who are willing to learn and grow, who are good collaborators, um, who are often looking um, for innovative ways to solve problems. Um, because I can teach anyone um, a specific marketing software program or way to think about a tactic, but being um, a lifelong learner and um, interested in being part of a team, that's not something you can kind of teach someone. They really have to have that within them and be um, curious in their career. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So in terms of building on that, um, the aptitude part of it, do you find that um, going to graduate school or the certificates in marketing or digital marketing, are those important after someone has graduated with their bachelor's? Do you think that that's a fundamental way to stay relevant and show that you're a lifelong learner? Yes, absolutely. Um, so that's actually what um, kind of um, inspired me to go back and get my MBA. Um, the last two years I was doing an MBA program um, two nights a week. Um, and I really wanted that lifelong um, learning kind of track. Um, I, my undergraduate degree is in journalism, so I really wanted more of that foundational marketing coursework. Um, but also I realized in my role at Disney, because we interact with so many different types of um, partners, I needed that more well-rounded business acumen. I needed to be able to understand my finance partners. I needed to be able to understand um, my HR partners. And so um, I found value in my MBA because it gave me a little bit of other um, kind of subject matter. Um, I think because I am passionate about lifelong, long, lifelong learning, that is something that um, I look to, right? I am very curious right now about TikTok. So I've been watching girls um, on YouTube who teach kind of how they make TikToks and it's fascinating to me, but I'm always looking for kind of tools to add to my tool belt, right? Because in your career, you have marketing strategy as a tool. You have the ability to write, you have the ability to think critically as a tool. So you always wanna be thinking, what other tools can I add to my tool belt to help me in my career? Mm -hmm. I think that's great. And my daughter would agree with you on TikTok. It is life for her. Um, although she's under the age of 13 and got kicked off. So now she just fakes videos. <laughs> but I think you bring up a, an important lesson. And that is when you're working in a field, you can't settle because education is not a destination. It's, it's this lifelong journey. And I can certainly relate to you on so many levels because I too went back after being a graphic designer, which is how I started mm -hmm. and uh, working my way through wanting to be in marketing in that transition, but found myself without the lexicon to be able to keep up with some of my coworkers when they started talking about business strategies and how the organization works. So getting my MBA in marketing helped build my knowledge in the area that I wasn't well-versed in. So great thoughts there as well. We have a lot of questions coming in. Okay, so um, what advice would you give to someone who has aged out of internships or have graduated college several years ago in terms of getting into marketing or 
um, finding a, a marketing position. Because as I mentioned, a lot of the marketing positions require digital marketing and previous educations or degrees 10, 15 years ago just didn't teach that. So what advice would you give to someone that has been out of school for a while? Well, I think for Disney specifically, and I don't speak on behalf of the company, this is my experience, what I saw, I will say, I don't know if anyone would ever age out. Um, one example, on my Disney college program, there was a gal who was 53 and she went back to school and took, um, I think maybe uh, two kind of semesters of classes um, just for kicks because having that kind of um, school under your belt qualified her then for a Disney college program or internship. And she was so excited to be on the college program with all of us because she was starting this new chapter of her career. So I don't think ever consider yourself aged out. There's always a way in, but um, one kind of um, other path, right? Um, if you're interested in something and you might not have the um, kind of paid job experience, consider volunteering your time, right? If you wanna learn about digital marketing, find a, um, a local nonprofit or charity that you're passionate about and say, hi, I'm looking to grow my Facebook, Twitter, digital media skill set, and maybe offer to create a social media plan for them, offer to develop some content, um, do some videos, do some still assets, and you can build a portfolio um, totally on volunteer work. Um, and that's actually what I did before Disney. Um, I volunteered as an intern at the local community foundation where I grew up, and that's how I built my portfolio. So I think there's always a way to learn and grow and to kind of use experience, whether it's paid or volunteer, to springboard yourself into a new chapter of your career. Um, you're never too old to learn. <laughs> That's right. I agree with that. And nonprofits are begging for help. So I volunteer for a local nonprofit. And the great thing about working with a nonprofit is you can see the benefits and the rewards, um, especially if you take over their social media, because there's a lot of analytics that you can garner from that. So you can create some really nice portfolio pieces as you've talked about, um, and they really do need the help. So let's see. Um, hmm. Do you feel like you can be yourself at Disney or is there a certain expectation of employees? Um, well, a good example um, of this, I truly believe I am my full self at work. Um, I don't think I shared this at the beginning, but I'm a total Disney nerd. Um, I was that kid that grew up watching the Disney VHS tapes. I had a total Hannah Montana high school musical phase in middle school. So Disney, like I eat, um, sleep and breathe Disney. But I will say Disney does have um, a number of values um, as well as behaviors um, that are encouraged, right? Yesterday, um, we announced um, what we call our fifth key. So at Disney, we have the four keys, which are safety, courtesy, show, and efficiency. So as a Disney leader, I live out those four values. But yesterday, um, I'm so honored that the company rolled out our fifth key of diversity and inclusion. And because inclusion is such a big focus, um, they've actually changed the Disney look. So this question might have been asking um, about how um, formerly cast members were required to show up at work. Um, so I give the example of nail polish. So if you see, I have hot pink nails right now. Um, traditionally, the Disney look was very conservative. You could have a French manicure and you could maybe have light pink nails, nothing kind of over the top. But because inclusion um, is now our focus, right? We've taken away kind of that, um, those kind of more stringent rules. So cast members now can have um, tattoos within reason. You can wear kind of fun colored nail polish as long as it's one color, no glitter yet. Um, and we've changed um, just the standards for um, appearance. We used to have very um, gender focused costume requirements and we don't have that gender requirement anymore. So I'm very proud um, of yesterday's announcement. Um, and I hope that answers the question. I think that's a wonderful answer. That's wonderful to hear Disney's taking that step too. Is there anything that you know now that you wish you had known earlier in your career? Ooh, that's an excellent question. Give me one moment to collect my thoughts. <laughs> you know, Dr. Walker, I think I wish upon graduation from college, I knew it was okay to not always have the answer, right? Um, you're in a meeting and your boss says, hey, Kathleen, I need you to go. Um, one was, I was told I needed to write XML markup for a YouTube video and I'm like, whoa. I don't know what that is. And I was kind of panicked, but um, I've learned the rule of three. 
So whenever you don't know something, think of three kind of steps. The first is Google it, right? You can often learn things on Google or on YouTube, teach yourself. The second is ask a coworker. The person next to you might know what that kind of tactic or software or whatever is. Um, and then the third is your network. Reach out to people in the industry, people in your marketing corner. Um, look for kind of three different um, ways to find that um, the answer to your question um, before you go to your boss, right? Because your boss has a lot going on and you don't always want to be bothering them with every single thing. So the rule of three and giving myself grace to not always have an answer and it's okay if you have to go look three places to find the answer. Um, I kind of wish I knew that earlier on in my career. I think I'm going to use that in my classes. I think students would benefit from hearing that. That's, that is awesome advice. So um, are there any other areas in marketing that you would like to explore in the future for yourself? Yeah, so right now um, I work on the Walt Disney World marketing strategy team. Um, I would love to see if my career would ever take me to the West Coast and support um, Disneyland Resort or one of the other um, kind of California-based Disney businesses, whether it's Pixar, um, Disney consumer products, um, or even right now in New York, Disney Plus, they have incredible stuff going on in their marketing team. They're very creative. So I would love the opportunity to work um, kind of on one of those brands. Sounds like you have some goals setting there. Absolutely. <laughs> so I love this question because as somebody who's always looking for ways to grow our program and make those competitive offerings to our students, what, um, with your marketing major, what minor would you suggest pairing it with? Um, I think just based on the way the industry um, is going, there's so much focus on data and analytics. Um, and I, I think having that data and analytics foundational skill set is very valuable in the workplace. Um, I often am bugging those data and analytics experts in my line of business. Hey, can you help me? How can we cut this data down? How do we do this pivot table? Because um, I want to learn those things. And um, if I could go back, I think I would definitely take more data analytics types classes. Yeah, I think that that's good advice as well. I need to take a few more as well. <laughs> so would you say that your role is more creative or more logistical? Um, I would say I'm 50-50. So I'm creative um, in the campaigns I work on from a marketing strategy perspective. But because so much of my time is spent on ensuring the marketing integration of our 50th anniversary, 50% of my time is logistics, right? I'm project managing to make sure food and beverage menus and all of that gets done on time because that affects PR and when they can shoot video and B-roll. So I'm pretty much 50-50, um, but I really like that, right? No day is the same. <laughs> exactly. Yep. I would agree. Um, here's a good one because as students work their way through college, they have deadlines that they need to meet and we know life takes over. Um, we try and emphasize that deadlines are a critical part to academics because it prepares them for the real world when they get a job. Um, if you're working on a project and it has a deadline, what tips do you have to refocus and stay on task? Yes. So I think just from a pure work strategy um, perspective, I am using this new function in Microsoft Outlook called focus time. So every week my calendar gets automatically blocked for two hours a day. And that's time for me to just sink into my email or whatever project I'm working on and have quiet work time. Being able to block that time and say, I'm not gonna have a Zoom meeting um, at that time gives me that time to focus, which is critical. From a deadline perspective, um, I am big on using my project management um, kind of lens to back out a deadline, um, especially at Disney. Um, a deadline, um, often you need checkpoints right ahead of the deadline. So if I have to send something to print um, on the 30th of the month, well, I want to make sure I get it to legal by the 15th to give them that buffer. Well, if I need it um, to legal on the 15th, then I need to get it to my team right before that. So I've, I build out that timeline. Um, so it's not just one deadline, it's many checkpoints along the way to keep me on track and make sure things don't fall behind. And do you use any sort of scheduling software to help teams stay on track? Yeah, um, we're using that program um, Smartsheet. So it's data and analytics, but it's also project management. So you can go in and build out kind of the program framework. You can build out tasks um, and you can kind of see the critical path of, okay, if this task takes two weeks, it'll be done at this point, but oh, 
if we're delayed, then how does that affect the rest of the timeline? So I really like kind of the project management functionality um, of Smartsheet. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to check that out. I've heard of Monday.com and yeah. I have students use that one, um, but I will definitely check that one out. It looks like we have time for maybe a couple more questions here. So um, has working for Disney ruined some of the Disney magic for you as you get to see behind the scenes? Or do you find yourself equally surprised and impressed with their products as before? Um, people always ask that question. It's so funny to me. Um, I find myself in awe of everything that happens here, right? Like, there are people that do jobs that you would never think of um, at Walt Disney World. And I, I don't find the magic to be ruined at all. Um, I'm in awe that there are 75,000 cast here, right? Um, and everybody does their little piece. And at the end of the day, you can walk into the Magic Kingdom and you know you're going to have a great experience. And it takes truly all 75,000 of us to pull that off. So magic hasn't been ruined for me. <laughs> well, that's good. So in lines of working as part of a team that you talked about earlier, we have a guest on our chat that would like to know, is there friendly competition between Disneyland and Disney World, or do you find yourself sharing strategies globally? So we do um, share strategies globally. Because the Disneyland audience, um, they're much more um, focused on kind of local um, audiences versus Walt Disney World. We have four theme parks, we have um, over a dozen resorts, we have Disney Springs, we see more families come um, for vacations to us. So it, the audience is different. So I don't think really we compete. Um, they've got a great team over there and we learn from them and they learn from us. That's awesome. Okay, so how do you prevent burnout in your role? So it's been interesting um, in this past year in this work from home environment, um, our leadership team has given us um, kind of the challenge that we do work um, on very important things, but work um, is not everything, right? We, we work to live, we don't live to work. So I've gotten pretty diligent um, in setting those working hours. So I try to only log into my email from eight to six. Um, sometimes if we have a call with the um, Tokyo team, we'll do a late night call, but that's an exception, not the rule. Um, it's easy to get burned out, especially in the work from home environment. So being able to kind of set time to step away from work um, and recharge yourself is critical, right? Because if you're not taking care of yourself, you're not going to show up and do your best at work. So you really have to take care of yourself, eat well, get your sleep. Um, so you can show up fully for you and for your team at work. Mm -hmm. That's great advice. And I think that's a wonderful place to start wrapping up our webinar tonight. Um, we have just a few more minutes and I know there's a few housekeeping things that Jill would like to go over. Uh, we did have some participants and guests on the line tonight that would like to know if they may connect with you on LinkedIn. And I think Jill, there was a slide in the show that shared, yes, here is Kathleen's Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn handle. So please do feel free to connect with her. She has provided those for you. I can't thank you enough. I learned so much. Um, and sometimes it's just nice to hear that reinforcement of concepts that we are sharing with our students in class brought to life. Um, you certainly did bring the magic tonight and I can't thank you enough. So um, I will turn it back over to Jill for closing remarks. Thank you. So let me just get um, situated. So a big thank you to Kathleen Hill for your time and your insights. This was so informative um, and wonderful and, and definitely to Dr. Walker for hosting this event. Um, don't forget to register for our next virtual event on May 12th at um, 6 p.m. Mountain Time titled Agility Equals Stability with Wendy Gray, Director of Corporate Communication for, for the Waldinger Corporation. Um, the registration link will be in the chat. Um, and for anyone who is not currently a student who would like to pursue your degree at CSU Global, you can use coupon code DISNEY, which will waive your application fee tonight. And that concludes our career success webinar for this evening. 
Thank you all for our viewers um, for joining us. We hope you found the conversation inspiring. And I know I did. And someone posted about how they were excited about their next trip. And believe me, 311 days, I will be there as and um, counting down each day, every day. On behalf of everyone at Colorado State University Global, thank you. And please have a great rest of your evening. Bye, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.